What's up? So basically, uh, we're going to do a quick little FAQ. These are common things that I get asked all the time on Hook Grip. Um, and so basically, the first thing is also, by the way, I'm trying to test out a new mic that I just bought. We're going to potentially be using this for some podcasting and other sorts of features. A lot of people ask the same questions over and over, so I thought it might be helpful to kind of put together a little FAQ video. Maybe more people will see it this way. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But what ends up happening is a lot of people ask about our music. So the problem with the music situation is that a lot of times we post the same thing to Facebook, to YouTube, and to other places. And so we have you know, copyright issues to deal with, and that's fine and normal. But the problem is, is that we can't use, we can't use most copyrighted music on Facebook. They'll, if you try and upload it, it'll give you an error. It's the reason that you don't see um, popular song, uh, you know, videos and stuff like that on Facebook, but you will see them on YouTube. So in order to do that, we have to um, upload videos that have songs that are either not in Facebook's database or songs that are what's called royalty free, which basically means that you buy the right to use them for, uh, you know, commercial purposes for the most part. And so a lot of times we buy songs that you can't find on YouTube. You can't find them even on SoundCloud. You can't find them anywhere. Uh, You can't find them on iTunes. So we're buying songs off of places. For the most part, we use either audiojungle.net or we use pond5.com. Here's a screenshot of our um, Audio Jungle purchases from just the last few days. There's actually a lot more than that in here. And just as an example, here's the song that we used for the Ilya video um, where we did uh, 242 and 246. And uh, this is a song we just bought a couple days ago and... um, you know, it it uh, is not something I've found anywhere else. Pretty much, it's only for sale on these sites. It costs something like twenty dollars usually, and um, sometimes more. It depends on the site, but it's not something you can easily download. So, frankly, for all the people asking for the songs, usually the best way to get the song would just be to download our YouTube video and take the MP3 out of that. I recognize that that might be a pain in the ass, or you want to like look up the artist or something like that but a lot of times that's where our songs are coming from and for the times where that's not where they're coming from we might not even know the the artist um because it might be something that we edited a week ago two weeks ago and we just we just don't remember so i'm sorry if that's a disappointing answer but that is by far the most commonly asked question so i just figured i would explain what's actually going on Okay, question number two that's most common is people ask if a certain country session will be uploaded or if a certain lifter will be featured or this or that. The answer is is that we have literally, I don't even know, it's over 5,000 clips from the training hall this year just at the 2015 world. So I don't know off the top of my head in a lot of cases whether we're going to upload a certain lifter or a certain team. The answer usually is that we're going to upload everything, which is good. Um, If we have maybe two clips of a certain team and the person's doing 70 kilo warm-ups, we're probably not going to upload that just because it would, no one would care about that video. But if we have something interesting, like if we have in this case, the whole North Korean team, or if we have the whole Chinese team, or if we have anyone else, like, you know, let's say that would get, maybe top 10 in the Olympic point standings. If we have a bunch of footage of them, for sure it's going up. Um, Do I know whether we have it? Not always. Um, But, and, you know, is it worth my time to go look it up and answer every single one of these questions with a yes or no? It's not really worth it, so that's why I'm just telling you if we have it, we're going to upload it. Um, And in a lot of cases with this year's training hall, we had trouble. Uh, We talked about this on the China video that I think it was the November 17th China video. It might've been November 18th. I can't remember for sure, but one of the China videos, we talked about this uh, at the very beginning of the video, but basically we were limited as to where we could go in the training hall. A lot of people have also asked why Gregor was able to get better access 
And the, the reason was, was that he was working for the IWF. We weren't. So we were considered to be normal media, which we were. Um, I'm not asking for, you know, crazy special access. I do think it would have been better for everyone if we'd been able to get in. But, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, but basically, we had a lot of trouble with getting certain shots in the training hall this year because we were kind of on the edge of the, sh the training hall. And so in this case, this guy's asking about the Amyan Chol video that we put up in the last day or two. And the reason, the answer is, is that we won't be uploading the rest of the Team North Korea one because we just don't have it. Amyan Chol was training on a platform that was maybe 20 or 30 feet, maybe 40 feet closer than a lot of the other lifters. And we just don't have the other clips because there were, you know, 20 or 30 people standing in the way. And we just couldn't get the shots from that far away with like, you know, eight squat racks, a whole bunch of chalk buckets, people wandering. It's just, there's too many things to shoot through when you're trying to shoot across the training hall. So anyway, the answer is, is that we'll upload the good stuff from the training hall. If it's just really pointless, then we probably won't upload it. But don't worry, we're not leaving out anything which is interesting. So this ties in to the last question about Amyun Chol, North Korea, stuff like that. So someone's asking if we're going to put up Team Mexico. We get a lot of questions about certain countries, like, um, I guess not countries that wouldn't necessarily be considered to be the best in the world. They're not the Chinas, the Russias, the North Koreas, and, and th you know, stuff like that. But they're still good countries, like Mexico has a lot of good lifters. So the answer is, is that if we have a good video of that team, absolutely we will put it up but there's a very good chance that we don't have a good video of that team simply because they were on the other side of the training hall if you know basically about half of the teams trained on the other side of the training hall the training platforms were assigned so that means you're going to see a lot of the same teams over and over like north korea usa stuff like that or sorry not north korea um south korea uh and um that's basically what you're going to see just because a lot of the teams were on the other side so it's just unfortunate but that's how it was the other thing to note too about the different teams and stuff like that is that we're going through the footage um at, basically as it happened so right now we're still posting videos from november 19th uh, if you remember back to the worlds the worlds didn't start until november 20th so we still have a lot of training hall footage to go through Granted, we didn't do quite as much training hall footage shooting once the competition started because we only had so many people there and we were trying to do both the competition and the training hall, but we still did lots of training hall footage after the competition started, and there's lots of times where we didn't get a certain team just because they weren't there yet. As Just one example is Russia. Russia tends to enter bigger athletes, not smaller athletes. Russia also tends to come a little bit later. Russia is not one of these teams that gets their a week or 10 days before they compete. Some teams do that, but some a lot of teams don't. So at this point right now, as of November 19th, Russians weren't there yet, and they still weren't going to be there, I think, for another at least three or four days. So basically, that's, that's what's going on. That's why you haven't seen a Russia training hall video from us yet. So we get this question a lot. As you can see, I actually answered this guy um, about the different color antas and where to get this shirt or that shirt or something like that. So the answer is is that for a lot of shirts and stuff, you can't necessarily get them. However, with the China stuff, for the most part, that stuff's available. Um, one of the best ways to get it is to go onto a site called Taobao.com. T-A-O-B-A-O.com. You'll probably have to use the Google Translate plug in or use Google Chrome so it translates for you automatically. Um, there's basically forwarding services out there that will, um, you can buy stuff on Taobao, they'll receive the shipment for you in China because chances are the seller will only ship to China and then um, they'll forward it over to you for a fee. Now are you going to get it for cheap? The answer is no, you're not going to find a t-shirt that someone's wearing for $15 with shipping or something like that. This isn't like buying something on Amazon. However, you can buy them if you want. Um, sometimes you're going to have to search around and find ways to look for the Chinese characters of basically how the, the word anta. Or sometimes you just might not be able to find it. Sometimes things aren't available all the time. 
Um, but overall, if you want to get something, that's the way you get it. Now, in the case of the blue Ontas, the gold Ontas, the, the other color Ontas, the answer are, is basically that you can't get it. Um, I actually asked our contact at Anta. If you don't know, we actually we sell the, the red and yellow Anta shoes on the Hookrip store, which there's, I guess there might not be a link to it in the description, but just go to the Hookrip store. People know where it is. So we sell it. I know the guy who basically is in charge of making the shoes at Anta, that, uh, the, the weightlifting shoes. He told me when I asked if I could get a pair of a special color, he basically said no, that they're shoes only for Olympic champions. So that's why you see uh, a guy like Lu wearing a pair or Liao wearing a pair. It's because they're Olympic champions. A guy like uh, Wu Jing Biao or someone like that doesn't have a pair. Tian Tao doesn't have a pair. Even those guys don't get custom pairs. So if those guys don't get custom pairs, a bunch of people like us are probably not going to get custom pairs. So you can stop asking. You're not going to get the blue ones. You're not going to get the gold ones. Now, it is possible for us to order Antas in a certain color, but I think it would kind of lose its cachet if uh, hundreds or thousands of people had a certain color. So I think at that point, people would stop caring. So the answer is, is basically you're not going to get some sort of special one-off Anta, but if you want like the training shorts or the shirts or something like that, usually you can find it on Taobao if you have yeah, basically internet searching skills. Actually, we get this question a bit less often than I might expect, but we do get this question a lot, which is basically, is our logo based on a real-life lifter? The answer is yes. It's from a picture that was taken at the 2011 Worlds. However, I think even if a lifter saw it, they wouldn't recognize themselves. And the reason is, is that it was pieced together from several different pictures. So the head and other parts of the body are kind of manipulated because what happened was was I sent several pictures to a logo designer and I said hey this is the sort of look I'm looking for I want like a full extension shot on a clean um, this and that but I don't like this aspect or I don't like the the way the hair looks on this one or that one so it's kind of a bit pieced together um, from a few different shots so that concludes the first ever Hook Grip FAQ on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, I'm not an audio engineer by any means, but hopefully this more expensive mic will sound better um, for future audio-related stuff that we might do. We're not sure exactly what our plans are with that. I have a bunch of ideas, but we're thinking we're going to start expanding the content on the Hook Grip YouTube outside of just uh, maybe just training hall and competition stuff. We'll keep doing that, but we're we're going to diversify the, con uh, the content a little bit. So anyway, if you have other common questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and we will either address them there or in a future FAQ. Thanks.